Yeah, spot fires galore down here. We're talking about 60, 70 metre flame height. 60, 70 metre flame height. The winds basically went from zero to 104 kilometres an hour. Ember attack was horrendous. I wouldn't wish it upon anybody. The level of fire that we've had, how volatile it is, it, it is truly a, a devastating situation that we're in right now. In this instance, it was, it was so catastrophic that we were sent straight into property protection mode and confronted with some pretty horrific scenes. Yeah, go, go, go. People said to us, you need to prepare yourself for what you're going to experience, people that have been through fires before. Like, it wasn't like a bushfires just ambled through and, you know, taken out a little bit of the bush. This wiped the bush out. We drove through just after the fire front had gone through, a matter of seconds. It was, it was full on. It was hot. It's not a good situation to be in. Mother Nature's really pissed off. 21% of eastern forest gone. The driest year ever, the hottest year ever, and inevitable, huge, huge fires, massive loss of life. The sound of the fire, the intensity of the smoke, it was that really dark black colour. What was probably two, three o'clock in the afternoon ended up feeling like it was probably eight, nine p.m. at night. We lost a billion animals during this bushfire season. These are defenceless animals, they've got nowhere to go. You cannot outrun these types of fires. And you can see that there's no way really anything could have survived, you know. Our wildlife actually needs us now more than ever. And not only do they need a safe haven, but they need a voice. We need to tackle climate change. We need to make our honest best effort. If this summer isn't a wake-up call to all Australian politicians, uh, then I don't know what's going to be. The trees were just black matchsticks, utter silence, and just this white ash floor. White, the white and the black and the silence. It was, it was eerie. It was frightening. It was distressing.